Okay, so once the survey is sent, I'm going to show you um, the few steps which we need to go through in order to produce the, the heat loss report. <coughs> and we've got quite a few rooms in this in this uh, example. I'll click on uh, reports and progress. Although saying that if it would have just recently just come through, you'd click on survey submitted, submitted surveys, and you'd find it in there. Um, but click on here because um, I was. I just started doing it, pulling out the address details. Um, green Cottage, if I click on here. Um, so, project um, reference Green Cottage, um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Smith. Swift. Um, I, I just put in the address there, so that was, it, was a, it was a survey in progress. Um, the regional data for the degree day data is, is needed, and um, as a reference, you can click on this map, and you can see that um, if we're in the kind of the Oxfordshire area, we're in the one so it's Tower Thames Valley. So if I just uh, come out of there and go to click that one, and then the approximate city, we've got London, and the altitude, we can click on if we copy the postcode, click on this link, and we can uh, paste the postcode for 86. So we could say let's go for 100 meters above sea level, and so with the external design temperature has changed there. Go to the next step, and we've got different technologies. So we've got 14 rooms in the survey which has been submitted. Uh, the total floor area here. And we don't know which manufacturer to use or model, so at this stage we know we want to use an air source heat pump, so we'll leave it at that. Go to next. And we can see that when the site survey was um, carried out, that we've got a custom room here, custom room name. Um, so what we're going to do is just click on the yellow cell and state that it is a kitchen. And the air changes per hour. Um, and the uh, room design temperature will change accordingly. So we've got OK, and there we go. So let's just change there. So yeah, so we've got an old kitchen, and then the new part of the kitchen there. Um, so that looks all good there. All the air change rates are great, or the age of the room, the emitter type, all more, we're all happy with that. So if we go to um, uh, next. And we can see that. Oh, hang on, if I just go back again, I just wanted to show you that if it had mechanical ventilation, then we would click this button here because installed mechanical ventilation after 2006. And click if the property has mechanical ventilation, and we can use a default value of 50%. So that would reduce the air changes per hour further 50%. In this case, we're not going to do that. So we just unclick it. And also, you can add thermal bridging as well. So the um, help file up here, if I click it, Gives you a nice indication of um, of how the software works. Um, so if you clicked on, you know, roof glazing, tell you a little bit about it. Just we would subtract it from the roof. Um, degree day data, hot water, mechanical ventilation. So it talks about what we're actually doing, the calculation there. So it, it's it's um, a, a quick way to access some help there. Let's just close that. So yeah, so we're happy with that. Let's go to next and we can see uh, the the rooms which have have vaulted dimensions used are highlighted blue so we've got um, our conventional rooms and vaulted rooms all highlighted here the window areas roof areas it's all good so <coughs> and here is a summary of the vaulted rooms so we've got the room type and the uh, dimensions that we typed in in the app, and also what what are what are which are the walls um, A to D. And you can see there's a nice summary there: the roof area volume, and external total lengths, and a nice indication of which ones we used. Graphic representation. Go to next, and here we've got an indication so if we look at the top left here we've got grey which is say not required so that's fine information required okay so um, we need to click on these orange cells and, and state the internal route what the internal wall lengths are and we've got um, uh, and we've got please define for yellow as well so if we just click on the orange cell here 
and just say it's because it's an internal wall. We're just going to say it's uh, a plasterboard and studding. Uh, we can click on there again. Okay. Uh, okay, so when we were on site, we had um, uh, some building description and thicknesses to, to, to observe. And for the natural stone, 150mm, um, with the insulation at 100mm, and block and plaster, we, we actually had the, the U value written on the drawing. So uh, if we click on the kitchen yellow cell, just can click there now. Uh, we can simply just go to OK and accept that because we've got the description and we've got the U value calculated. So we just go to OK. And you can see that's actually added. So those cells now are turned from yellow to white where that material is used. So it's accepted it. Next thing we need to do is because we we're on site, we, again, we had the thickness of the material and the description, then you know the name, but we didn't know the U value. So now we have to calculate that U value. So, so let's click on the living room, the top one. So the, the top yellow cell. Um, we go to create new building element and it's an external wall material name and type in stone thickness and the thermal conductivity and to check the thermal conductivity what you can do which I'll show you in a minute if you just go to OK and set, accept that you can click on this button here and the moment you click on this button, open thermal conductivity materials list, we'll have the um, yellow, um, if you look in the yellow column here, that's all the thermal conductivities to the different materials. So we can use um, insulation here, which is at 0 0.022 thermal conductivity. And then we've got stone, sandstone at 2.3, and the plasterboard as well, 0 0.25. So we know those values, so we can use that as a reference. Let's go to add the next material. And again, from the reference from when they, we did the site survey, you can look at the description here. So we've got stone thickness, uh, and so that helps us to uh, type in the, the, the information here. Thickness. So again, it's asking for in meters. It's asking it for in meters. So remember to, to actually, so we typed in millimeters on site, but you have to type it in meters when you're doing the calculation. So it's so 50 millimeters is of course 0 0.05 and then the last one so you can see the description is added is, is being created here again but with the U value being calculated let's go to add because we've got more material to be added which is plasterboard Okay, so it's calculated our U value here, 0 0.37. We're all happy with that, it's got the information there. We go to save, and you can see those yellow cells are now turned, have now turned white, so that's all good. We go to the next, go to so that was step six. Now we go to the next step, and we've got more yellow cells here, but we've got the U value for the window, so just click on. So here, and we just go to OK, and it's added there. Go to Next, and we've got some um, like another custom value here. So we click on the top one, we go to OK, that's accepted that, and we have another one. Just go to OK on that as well. And then finally, go to Review Heat Loss. OK, so one of the important steps on on step nine is is reviewing the information that's presented. So we've got uh, the air source heat pump required to heat the building must provide an output of 5.9 uh, kilowatts when the external temperature is uh, minus point uh, minus 2.1 uh, Celsius. So if we scroll down, we can see. Um, the, the room names here on the left hand side and we've got the watts per meter squared and the highest uh, watts per meter squared worst performing room will always be in red as well so we can see this is the ensuite in this case on the far right hand side we've got um, the total watts the power for each room 
and the total um, kilowatt hours, the, the energy required for each room as well. If we scroll down, we can see the total for the property, uh, both for power and, and energy there. And you can quickly review. Um, it's always worth to, to, to note to see um, you know the different um, elements of the building um, for each room. So we've got the floor, external wall, windows. Just making sure that all the data there, um, it makes sense. And a further check, if we scroll down, just double checking that you know you have got the U values there for the floors, for all the external walls as well, um, and here as well. So um, you, you kind of think, well, hang on a minute, why isn't there an external wall U value for the ensuite and dressing room? Well, you probably recall that um, on on the survey that um, there's no there's no external walls. So it's just it's just handy really just to check that you know you're happy with the U values being used for you know the windows, the walls, uh, and the roof here as well. On the far right hand side, we've got the uh, room temperature below below that room and um, we've got the room temperature above as well so that is uh, step nine so if we go to uh, next oh yes so we need to select a heat source so we click on this blue button here select heat source type model to proceed and we can click on manufacturer click on say uh, Nibi and we can click, click on a uh, an 8 kilowatt machine uh, I know the 8 kilowatt machine at minus 2.1 so at this point this is important to get out the, the, the manufacturer's data just to see what the performance is so at minus 2.1 um, um, we want to ensure that the output um, is, 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 cap uh, is capable of achieving um, over uh, 5.9 because the building heat loss in this case we know is 5.9 is calculated on step 9 and we want a machine that can just do over 5.9 um, the initial design flow temperature we're going to use is 45 degrees uh, Celsius um, so the output of a 8 kilowatt machine here for Nibi would typically be about 8 kilowatts for um, 45 flow temp at minus 2.1 and domestic hot water if you use 8 again, uh, it could be 7.9. We'd have to check the weather, we'd have to check the data on off the, from the manufacturer for that model. And go to OK. And then go to optional pages. And um, we can click on what would we would like to ha um, have in the in the report, the heat loss report. Because it's an air source heat pump um, report we don't need the ground loop design so we get a no we'd want fuel comparison now we don't need a bivalent design and there are no current radiators we didn't measure on site so we just want those two so we, we can click for any through for all these processes anyway so we can go to uh, domestic hot water um, we can type in the number of bedrooms for uh, number of occupants per bedroom and the hot water from the air source heat pump would typically be about 55 degrees and that's done we go to emitters and performance and at this stage we've got the um, watts per meter squared the heat loss for each room and um, we know what the type of emitter is under floor heating throughout and the floor for the floor surface finish whether it's a carpet or tiles and of course we've got the construction as well so it's screeded or aluminium plates so the only thing we really need to do here is to select the flow temperature for each room so we click on the living room, the top one and let's select uh, select um, 45 and instead of doing it for each room all we have to do is click on this copy all button and then select 45 and it goes all the way down there look. so that's all good there and now we can go to uh, current radiators and go to bivalent des design because we don't want current radiators we don't need that and we don't need that bivalent design click for next and we can see it's you know we've got add this page to report so we don't want that either and we don't want ground loop either so the air source heat pump 
results are now presented. So we've got the heat source selected and the worst performing room. And we've got the um, energy calculated as well and the estimated um, running costs. So we've said at minus 2.1, the building needs, uh, uh, this, the heat source needs to have an output of at least 5.9 kilowatts. And we've selected a, a NIBI unit which does 8 kilowatts. And we go to save and review. And on the left hand side, we have the MIS 2005 reference numbers, which an MCS auditor will, will can check um, against these references and what values we've got here down the middle. And we go to dashboard. And now you can go to completed reports and click on download PDF and it will download the PDF and of course you'll be able to um, review your reports and send it to your, to your client from there.